Hey you guys, so this week's update video has probably been a long time coming for those of you that have been anxious to know how our shrimp tank's doing. Overall, the shrimp tank is doing great, but there's been quite a bit of changes since the last time you've seen it in the video in, I think it was February. One of the first things you might notice is that there's no longer any driftwood in here. And we, with that driftwood, we kept fighting just back and forth with it. Well, really, it just, it never budged. One of them would sink and the other one just would not sink despite our best efforts. So we wound up just taking the driftwood out. We still have it soaking in a different container outside, but for now, we don't have any driftwood. And after we took that driftwood out, we wound up getting a bunch of plant clippings from a local guy, Kenny. Huge shout out to you, Kenny, because these plants have been doing awesome. We didn't really plant them with the most aesthetic mindset. We just kind of put them in here at function at first. We wanted to get the tank established, start getting some plants going in there, and maybe introduce a little bit of microfauna from a lake. One of the things you, we never showed is that we had a little bit of leftover water from one of the ecospheres. So we took that about cup and a half of water and we added it to here. With that small amount of water, after they've reproduced, we have a huge population of ostracods, isopods, daphnia, and some cyclops as well. But we don't see any amphipods in here, but that's okay. And one of the neat things about having those in the tank is they kind of helped us to judge how the tank was doing health-wise before we ever added any of our cherry shrimp into here. And they, their populations just exploded over time. Up here towards the top, I feel like there's a cloud of the ostracods just swimming around. And then more towards the middle of the tank, I definitely see a lot of the cyclops. And anywhere on the glass where I start to see any algae accumulating, I see the seed shrimp and I see the, cy or the cyclops all just swarming around that area and picking away at it. And even the shrimp will do it too. I like to pretend he's following my finger, but he's definitely not. <laughs> so while the tank is doing really healthy, it isn't necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing tank. When I planted the plants in here, I kind of just wanted them to grow, make sure the tank could start getting established. And then after that, I never really moved anything. I didn't trim, none of these plants have been trimmed. The only thing I've taken out of here has been the duckweed that just created such a thick layer on top that almost none of the light was getting down to the bottom and I started seeing plants start dying off. We are gonna be putting new floating plants in here, but the aesthetic part is something we're going to be changing. And that's partially because of the way the plants and everything inside of here is set up and partially because of the tank itself. With this tank, at first we thought that the Bowfront tank was gonna be awesome. We've never had a Bowfront tank before. It just seemed like a wonderful, just all around view. It might even be able to make it so you could see into the stuff a little bit better. One of the things we didn't realize is that just how much that Bowfront tank really distorts seeing into it, whether it's me or the camera. I like to try to get micro shots of a lot of the things that we're working on and this Bowfront tank, oh my gosh, I have had such a hard time trying to get good video of the little shrimp in here. And it just, it so quickly distorts that video with this Bowfront tank. So I, I've been having a heck of a time getting video into it. And not to mention it happens the same for my eyes. Like sometimes when I get up in the morning, I like to look in here, see if I see any new baby shrimp. I like to try to count the shrimp just to see if I get a new high score. Two of them, Whoop. they came to my fingers again. And every now and then when I'm kind of moving around, it just kind of disorientates me a little bit because just the way the light and everything just is bent by the glass. So that's one of the things we kind of want to get away from. We have some pretty bad luck. And when we ordered these shrimp in, they were no exception to this bad luck. There was a little bit of a miscommunication with the people we bought them from, and they sat in the carrier a little longer than expected. So when it came down to it, we only wound up getting about five live shrimp and one of them passed away within the first couple of days. So what was supposed to be a nice starter colony of shrimp wound up being only four. But the one saving grace to that is that one of those four shrimp was a buried female. And as we were doing the drip acclimation to get her ready for the tank, as well as the others, we actually started seeing that the babies were coming off and she was actually, we had much more than just those four shrimp that we originally thought. So we we're really happy to know that the tank, everything we did ahead of time, getting the plans in here, giving it a lot of time to cycle, and even putting, I like to believe, putting in those other smaller inhabitants really helped prime this tank to make that transition easy because we went from having buried shrimp that were giving birth in the bags from the carrier to those babies surviving. And now we have those babies pregnant again. We have over six buried females in this tank, and I think the max count that I've counted with shrimp has been about 26. So we started seeing the buried shrimp about two weeks ago 
which means that in about the next week, we're going to see, well, maybe not see really, because they're really hard to see, um, a lot of baby shrimp. With all those issues we had with this tank, we're going to look into getting a new tank. Um, it's going to be a second tank. This one's going to still keep going in the background because it's, well, incredibly healthy. But the new one is hopefully going to be not quite as deep, a flat front, and it's going to be a little bit wider and not quite as tall. When they're really tall tanks, it has a hard time getting the light really properly down to the bottom of the tank. So some of those plants can have issues, especially if you have a thick layer of duckweed on top. Ever since we started this tank and got the support of some of our patrons, Erica thought the idea of making little sponsorship certificates for these shrimp would just be a fun idea. So she's going to start getting those all set up with the photos and the videos I'm gonna be getting of the shrimp. And we're gonna reach out to you, those of our patrons who have sponsored these shrimp, so we can get copies of them to you. And if you're willing to and you send us or let us know what your physical address is, we're gonna get these printed out and actually send these out to you, our patrons, who have been very patient and loyal for this whole shrimp project. I can't say thank you enough with how just generous and patient you guys have been with this project. We have shrimp in here with berries, babies. When we ordered these shrimp in, they were no exception to this bad, bad bleh. They were no exception to this bad luck. Hey, you little kitty. I... Meow, little kitty stretch. 